Hey man, I'm Kevin Smith. Welcome back to Sunday. It's 2019. This is the IMDb studio at Acura Festival Village. And look, man, it's the cast of Paddleton. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, the entire right. cast yes. is represented right yes. here. Yes. Rare. Um, take me into the movie, because boy, this sounds like a hoot. Uh, assisted suicide picture? Yeah, assisted suicide, guys. It's the best thing going these days. Um, this is a story of uh, Michael and Andy. That, uh, Ray and I play these guys. And mm. they're kind of this, uh, strange outliers, guys who uh, have a hard time making eye contact with you. And um, they have basically found this beautiful male platonic friendship in each other. Um, and it's about basically what happens when uh, you know, they're faced with a cancer diagnosis for one of them and the threat of uh, losing that. Where does it come from? Where do you, I mean, I, I know you've made like 132 movies in the last 12 months 130, alone. 133. You're actually, always working. Where does an idea like this come from? Do you read an article? Does it come yeah, from real life? Yeah, you know what it was? It was a little bit of a, it was a a response to the way that quote unquote bromances are portrayed on, on camera, which to me is like, it's always like a joke if, if men try to be intimate on camera in any way, shape or form in a platonic way. And, and this one, we really wanted to explore what it was like to just like have a truly intimate male friendship and, and how special they are to each other. Kind of the way romantic comedies do, but with just two special guy friends. So what's that's where our, what's it happened. Our, what would our bromance name be? It's Ray and Mark. It's Ray, yeah. Rark. 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 Or yeah. Mark. May. <laughs> or, or Mark. Yes. R Rack. No. Duplano. <laughs> we got that. That's good, yeah. Rome. Rome. <laughs> when, when you're putting together a flick, do you, how do you decide, you, when to, I'm going to direct this, I'm not going to direct this? Well, in the case of Paddleton, which I co-wrote with uh, Alex Lehman, who I made another movie with called Blue Jay, mm -hmm. um, he felt like the right fit there. Um, and lately what I've been doing is trying to write and produce more and allow, like, honestly, younger, more excited directors take the helm. It allows me to be able to do more projects because I'm not spending an entire year doing that one thing. You know, when you're directing, you have to be monogamous to that project. But as True. a writer and a producer, you can be polygamous. I right. said that in Utah. I think I guess that's okay. <laughs> um, and um, and I really, you know, I, I think at this stage of my career, I like giving shots to younger filmmakers to like, you know, see what they can do. And what older, year? And older actors. And older actors as well. Yeah. Yeah. What year are you, in your career are you at this point? How many uh, years have you been doing this? So I, I've been at Sun. This is my. 16th year coming to Sundance. Are you shitting she came me? Came here with a short film in 2003. It's crazy when you look at like your name and Sundance. Yeah. Like everything you do. If you sneeze, whole, they're like, "Come on up." I owe man. my whole career to this to this festival. I, I had a short film that I made for three dollars in my kitchen with my brother when I was 25 years old, and um, it went into the rejection pile because they're like, "This is so ugly and it sounds terrible." And uh, Trevor Groth, who was the head of the festival for years, was then a shorts programmer. He's like, this looks interesting. And he picked it out of that bin. And I have nightmares to this day thinking about if he had not picked it out of that bin, Ooh, like, would where on? would I be right now? Like, if, you know, so. He's your um, guardian angel. Uh, he's Trevor. my guy. I'm really lucky to be here. Yeah. Um, who are you playing in the movie? The one with the cancer or the one that doesn't have the cancer? So, yeah, my character gets a cancer diagnosis. And, and, and Ray plays Andy. And, and we met because he had done... The Big Sick, and I was a huge fan of what he had done in that movie. I liked what he had done in Parenthood, and I was noticing like this pivot kind of in his career towards this type of stuff. Um, and uh, I tackled him at the Big Sick after party, and I was like, hey, man. I think I came up to you. I, I think, think I... listen, this is, we don't need to fight on camera. <laughs> Kumal, Kumal introduced <laughs> this, yeah. It, and I yeah. was a fan of yours. I was a fan of his. I mean, you were doing togetherness then at that point, mm -hmm. the show on HBO, which I loved. And I had seen all your stuff too, and and he introduced us, and I just thought you were too hip and too indie to ever want to do something with me. But then that, at that moment, you said, "I got a project you might be good for." And, and then I thought, well, you hear that all the time, and then you never hear from the guy. A couple of weeks later, you yeah, my agent said you were sending over a, an outline, not a script, an outline, and and that's all it was going to be was an outline, and that was even scarier. Right. But. Yeah, I, I was so happy to, to jump in. Uh. 
Do you script? Or is there a full script? Or? Uh, it depends on the project. For, for this project, we try to keep it fresh by shooting from an outline, and then we try to shoot in chronological order as much as possible. Which, for those watching at home, like... It's that, rare. You don't, you do don't that get to movies. do that. Yeah. But, and, and what I would do is um, I would write some sort of sample pages every now and then the night before we would shoot a scene. So we'd have a guide, but we wouldn't memorize it so it would still feel fresh the next day. Mm -hmm. And then whenever we were done shooting, we would all have dinner together, the cast and the crew, everybody together. We'd talk about what we'd shot. You know, and, and as you're improvising, certain things happen. So, oh my gosh, they fought more than we thought we would. So then we would change the scene the next day just a little bit to sort of incorporate that. And, and you know, when you make a movie like that, as unplanned as this is, I grab a bunch of people, I throw us off a cliff way before we're ready. Mm -hmm. You lose some things because you aren't as well prepared. But what you gain in spontaneity and, and nerves and all that freshness, I think, is what I'm it going for. It may have for. spoiled me. It may have spoiled me. I don't know if yeah, I, you had I to go work go with fucking what was that guy Martin Scorsese? You had to go work with after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he's kind of loose too. Yeah. He lets you he lets you do a little thing, but then there are doesn't directors. let everybody do that. Yeah. He does it with yeah. you because you're good. Well, but then you get directors where it's you know just say the words and that's fine too. That's fine too. But this was so freeing and so unique, man. It was so cool. This is a Netflix jam, like that deal yeah. where you guys get to make a bunch of Netflix Netflix movies? jam, How which they basically, been? they're so great, and I'm looking you in the eye, and I'm saying, I'm not just saying that because they pay for my movies, they are great for You're not the young first. independent Daniel filmmakers. Gilroy was talking about the same thing. It's really, I mean, look, there's no secret, like I'm making small, relationship-based movies in a marketplace that doesn't really value that, and mm. there's 500 movies and TV shows we all want to see anyway, and Netflix is basically using their money and their power to subsidize this kind of art and put them out and promote them on their channel. So as long as they want to have me, man, I'm in. It's crazy, man. The indie film community seems to have been funded at this point. By we Netflix. were all scared. We all thought there were Starbucks coming in. And then we were like, but wait a minute. They're Starbucks. That means they're making a lot of money. They'll give us some. And we like coffee. Yeah, and yeah. they're 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 cool. So you know, as long as I as long as I do what I do and what you have done through the years, which is just like as long as I keep it cheap and um, you know they they let us do what we want to do. It's great. Uh, you've got a history with Netflix now too, don't you? Have a special coming on Netflix? I do on the fifth, February fifth. First one in like twenty three years. Yeah. Was that nerve wracking at all? I Everything mean, is nerve-wracking for Ray. <laughs> he seems laid back. Yeah. Everything is nerve-wracking. This is nerve-wracking. <laughs> uh, yeah, in a sense, yeah, because, I mean, uh, you know, it's not nerve-wracking to go up on stage at the cellar in New York. You know, it's the normal nerves, but it's what I do. I can do it. But does anybody want to see it anymore? Um, and I was just kind of taking my cues from the audience, you know, because I... I, I I'm not in denial, I'm a realist, and I know at some point you're, you're maybe past, you're too old for the audience, you don't hold up anymore. And, and when I would go on stage at the cellar, I would still get this energy. And so, you know, I'm at a certain age now, when am I gonna do a special? Do, do it, get it there, and you have something to look at, that your kids can look at, you know, and we'll see, we'll see how it's received, but it was fun to do, but it, yeah, but you know, it was those kind of nerves. It's, do, does anybody want to hear me anymore? <laughs> What's fascinating to hear, and particularly for like folks who are like, I want to do that one day, is that one of the most successful people in this business is like, I don't know if they're going to like me. <laughs> yeah. like, like, they're still at this stage it's of the game. It's all the same. Yeah. There's trepidation. Here, here's the way I say it. You know, before I thought my cab driver hated me, and now I think my limo driver hates me. It's all the same. <laughs> it's just, it's all relative. Yeah. But that's, at the risk yeah. of sounding corny, that's why you make... Good yeah. stuff. Beware the person who comes out and says, I know they're going to love this. That's true. Because that most certainly will be full of shit. Totally. You know what I loved was vinyl. I loved yeah. it, and I thought you mm. crushed in it. Oh, and then thank you. one season, and then all of a sudden, gone. Yeah. But looks like the guy who produced that show was paying attention, gave you a job, and yes, the other thing. Yes. Are you on The Irishman? That, I'm on The Irishman. And that was nerve wracking because in, the, in vinyl, he had me go on, I had to go on tape to get that. Gig, you know, and, and I did. So you had to, what? what? Wait, stop. Yeah, well, they made you audition, go on tape? <laughs> well, it's Scorsese, yeah, of course. Fuck, yeah. but it's Ray Romano. No, 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 no. I it's made Scorsese. him read for me six different times in different <laughs> accents. No, but it's, Why are you a Scorsese-level <laughs> prick, man? No, but, here's, but the, the thing is, he had never heard of me. The, this is the cool thing is, he, they, they got him the tape and he said, there's something there. He goes, and who is this guy? I never heard of him. So, so my agent said, well, you mean he, he's never seen the show? No, never heard of him, which... 
You won it. Yes, it, of it, it worked in my favor because yeah, yeah he, he didn't have this notion of who this guy is. So so I got that from what he saw. And then in the Irishman, he just cast me because he liked me in that, but now I'm playing a different role. So that was frightening as hell because how does he know I can do this? On on vinyl, he saw it on tape. Right. Here he's just trusting it that I'm gonna come in and be with Pesci and De Niro and, and be able to fit in. It, it scared the hell out of me. I had eczema, it broke out, it was everything. <laughs> Wait, did you, you were in a scene with Pesci and De Niro? They're, they're all in Multiples. there. Pacino, P, P, yeah. Pacino gave me my favorite uh, insult ever. He, because uh, they, they aged me up. I would have to wear a fat suit when, when, I, it was in, when I was in my 70s. And, and we went to lunch, we came back, we were ready to do a scene. And dead serious, Al Pacino goes, he looks at me, he goes, Oh, I didn't know when is I didn't know you were wearing the fat suit in the scene. I go, I'm not Al, not wearing the fat suit. Yeah, I was so I was bloated, whatever I was. I was sitting and he it's the equivalent of the saying when do you do yep. and you're not do. <laughs> yeah. 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 What is it like to get to that place? I mean, you're you're I imagine your career has been like one after another, like wow, wow, wow. But surreal, yeah. To be on a set with legends. Yeah, crazy. It was uh, Jesse Plemons was on it also. And see, there was a scene where we're walking down the hall and, and Pacino and, and De Niro are walking ahead of us in this court hallway. And they're gonna make them younger. They're gonna CGI them younger. And so you know what that's gonna look like. Me and Jesse were walking behind them. And after take after take, we would just get back in our spots and go, I, I can't believe we're doing this. I just can't <laughs> believe we're doing this. That's right? one of my favorite yeah. things about Ray is he is one of the most successful people in our industry and he's the least entitled person you, <laughs> you will ever meet. Wow. What makes the humanity really good. So. That's what plays, man. That's it's always played in the in the comedy, man. You're real. That's why I, I, the weird thing to me when you talked about going back to do the gig and going like would anyone care? Everything, the wellspring from like your entire career came from standing on a stage and being funny, correct? Yes. yes. So was there some sort of like, well, I did that and that took me to this place, so I better I better never touch that again. As far as stand up, you mean? Yeah. No, that's more with the sitcom. The sitcom I don't want to touch again. Is that right? Like because yeah. of because of everybody. I loves did Ray? it, and that's my legacy in sitcom. I'm not. I don't want to have to follow that. Right. You know. Cut the, two. No, no, no. <laughs> Coming Tuesdays on yeah. CBS. Exactly. The stand-up is because I really think that's if you act. If you ask me, are you a, an actor at your core or your stand-up? I'm, I'm a stand-up, you know, I, I love doing acting. I'm, I'm it's not that much different though, as I'm sure you've noticed at this point. If you can get up yeah. and, and put on a character and be funny in front of people, you're just getting up putting on a character in front of a camera. Yeah, yeah, but not every stand-up can, can do, you know, can translate You know what, acting. bullshit, Ray Romano, let me tell you about stand-up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is a winter hat that yeah, we right. uh, put some questions in. Ooh. We ask you to take a question oh, out and both snap. of you answer this question. Got it, all right, the question yeah. is, Scared again. if you could star in a biopic about anybody, who would it be? Wow. Well, well you gotta look like him, I What guess, I'm told right? is I should do a biopic about Ron Livingston, because apparently I look a lot like him. So if I, I, could I, see if that. I follow that, I should really do the Ron and Livingston biopic. And I look like Zach Braff, but that is in reverse. I right. would have to play him. <laughs> I would have to play him as an old man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's Jeez, really I interesting. Know. I never really thought about that before. There Sooner was a time... later, you have a, a whole career that's predicated on film. More films than probably most filmmakers mm -hmm. get to make in a lifetime. So sooner or later. If it ain't somebody else, it will likely be you going, I think I'll do my own biopic. Maybe I'll do my own biopic, yeah. yeah. Um, there was a oh, time in my, uh, in my late 20s where I thought I could have played Bill Hicks. That would have been interesting oh, for me. Oh, wow, that deep cuts, Paul, that was nice. Yeah. Well, you know, we were, my, the t serious answer is we were tossing around Jim Volvano. You know Jim Volvano? No. He's, he was the coach of North Carolina State. That's you know, right. and yeah. He's the guy who, uh, the SB, uh, you know, he, he unfortunately died of cancer, but when he was, close to death, he gave that speech at the ESPYs, don't give up, don't ever give up. Um, and we were close to doing this picture because I kind of looked like him and, and he had this comedian vibe to him and he was a very inspirational guy, but it's in the works, but I don't know if it'll ever be done. Yeah. And it has to be done soon because I'm, I'm already 15 years older right, than he right, was. Yeah. That he was in, in yeah. Once you get famous enough to play somebody in a biopic, you're too old to play that person. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. the problem with biopics. Give it up for the boys from Paddleton, ladies All and right. gentlemen. Thank you.